why I say no to kind offers to pay for my health challenges. G'day, it's Charles McKenzie from Infected Blood Australia, and I have to say I'm very moved by the sheer volume of messages I've had in response to some videos I made about uh, my health challenges, uh, and just lately about the fact I've got two broken teeth. Um, like many tainted blood victims, victims of Australia's deadliest medical scandal, HIV and Hep C contaminated blood and blood transfusions, our teeth disintegrate. Anyone who knows anything about the infected blood scandal uh, knows that uh, recipients of tainted blood have a big problem with their teeth, particularly those people with the deadly virus Hep C, like myself. I've still got the virus and um, our teeth can literally just implode. You could be eating one day, your teeth just breaks and that's happened to two of these teeth. They've now broken in half and uh, yeah, they've been very painful. So I've been having big problems eating uh, and as I explained uh, also, big problems sleeping. I contacted the New South Wales Health Department and asked that they would uh, uh, give me an appointment at the dental hospital, which the Australian taxpayer uh, pays for. I was then told that uh, there could be no appointment uh, because it would have to be many months away and uh, I didn't have many months. I explained the situation to the New South Wales Health Department and they said to me, listen, we're only prepared to pay for one tooth. Um, their policy is they will not pay for both teeth. And so I was sent a voucher for $377. Okay, I think you can see that there. And they also sent me a list of approved dentists that accept their vouchers. And so far I've rung up three local dentists that supposedly accept their vouchers and I've been declined. The reason I've been declined is they say that for the type of damage that I have, uh, I have to pick which tooth I fix. They won't do both because they've only got the voucher for one. But they've said actually the damage that I've had will cost more than $377 because the tooth has to be extracted and presumably replaced with something so I can chew. And the, also the other complication uh, as well is I have a bleeding disorder. And so here I am ringing up dentists trying to haggle with $377 and I could end up getting a cowboy and uh, it could actually be a risk to my health, to my life, because the bleeding might not stop. I really prefer it to be done in the hospital uh, with people who are aware of my bleeding disorder, okay? But um, so far I've been declined. Now, uh, why is it that I say no to very kind offers to pay for this? Because the amount of uh, support that I've had, I could pay for both of these to be done. There was someone very kind said they'd like to donate so I get to see the best dentist. Gosh, you're a good Australian. You're all good Australians. You really are. Yeah. And, um, well, this is why. The Infected Blood Australia campaign is not my campaign. This is a national campaign, and uh, our pages on social media are about a national campaign. We are here for the tens of thousands of Australians who've been infected and affected by this scandal. There are many other victims in this group. I'm sure some of them are watching now. I hope they are. And I hope I do them justice when I say that their teeth come out and their teeth implode. And they are subjected to the same nonsense that I have just been. I'm sort of road testing what they go through too. Many tainted blood victims don't want to go public. They want to maintain their privacy and they have my complete understanding. Uh, I totally get it. I do ask other victims in this group if they'd like to go public, if they'd like to uh, you know, go on social media with us. Um, the Australian media won't, won't talk to us, okay? Um, the ABC, for example, we've tried for decades to get them to uh, investigate Australia's deadliest medical scandal and their chief medical reporter recently went on the record and said, look, this story has been well widely covered already. Um, you know, Australia knows about it. There's no need to cover it. Well, that's a fraud. Um, the ABC has never done a Four Corners. It's, you know, premier investigative program. But we all know in Australia, if there's a major scandal, generally we hear uh, the Four Corners, we see that logo turn up and it associates it, or we hear tick, 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 60 minutes. None of them want to touch it, okay, because the scandal is that big. I, I've researched lots of uh, tough stuff in my life and scandals, and I've brought those out to the public. And after 30 years of doing this, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, and I'm in the final chapter of my life. 
And what I've discovered is that there's a glass ceiling. You know that term glass ceiling? We used to say that uh, women who were you know, not paid uh, equivalent amounts to men in the workforce faced a glass ceiling in their careers. There was a, you know, a, a, a pay structure that formally denied women and denied them promotions and what have you, even if they were as capable as men. Uh, a regrettable situation that uh, hopefully has been corrected out there, uh, perhaps not to a level that, that it should be, but um, there was a glass ceiling. Well, you find out when you investigate Australia's deadliest medical scandal um, that there is a glass ceiling to humanitarian atrocities. Uh, governments don't want to go near it, neither do opposition parties. We've written to Australia's health minister countless times, uh, as have members, followers and supporters of our group, and he never replies. He has one of his uh, staff reply. Uh, he'll never sign the letter, and this is so he can disavow knowledge. We've also had victims in the group and their loved ones write to Australia's Shadow Health Minister Mark Butler and his actual office reply and they say that um, Mark uh, can't speak up on this issue and the reason for that is even though he agrees it's an injustice he says that the wheels of politics move very very slowly and this is going to take some time. Well that's interesting because the worst of tainted blood happened before the 2000s 20 years ago and 30 years ago in the 1980s, or was that 40 years ago now? Gosh, I've been doing this a long time. And um, yet Butler uh, could support a Royal Commission into COVID. That's only been around, what, two or three years now? But he says the wheels of justice take too long for contaminated blood. Now, the real truth is there's a glass ceiling. They don't want to go near it because they know that Australia has infected tens of thousands of people, not just here, but we also were one of the world's biggest exporters of blood. Did you know that? The government used to own an organisation called the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. And I've explained in previous videos that they are now, they've been privatised in 1994 when they made a getaway from all the people they infected. The government criminally basically said, listen, privatise so you can make an escape. And a whole bunch of public servants who've been responsible for infecting so many people and for killing 1,400 haemophiliacs, people with a bleeding disorder, that they created a blood treatment for that they knew was contaminated. They even imported foreign blood, and I've, I've actually I mixed it into the products. I've actually um, shared that on Instagram, that evidence. It's criminal evidence. And those same public servants, having murdered patients en masse, including children, ended up uh, privatising CSL and becoming worth absolute fortunes. And that's been reported, would you believe, by the Australian media. So it's well known. And uh, here it is. We shared it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Beautiful blood. How CSL became a global success story. There you are, a chap called Dr. Peter Schiff. He's talking about how he made a small fortune and the Sydney Morning Herald is saying about what you know how he deserves it and it makes sense that he made a small fortune. Yeah, while covering up the fact that he murdered children. And here's that evidence again where they, here he is in 1984 saying uh, they won't use available sterilisation techniques on their blood treatments to remove HIV and hepatitis C because there hasn't been enough pressure from interested parties. How disgraceful, huh? Yeah, and they're saying that uh, although haemophiliacs would like, would like to have a virus, HIV and hepatitis C free product, and he said, no, we're not going to race to do that because it would increase costs. That's criminal. And so um, he's gone off and made a fortune. There's other public, former public servants that are now reported to have made hundreds of millions of dollars. And in fact, CSL today has a market capitalization of well over $100 billion. It's now the world's biggest blood products company. And I've also been told uh, by credible sources, and I've shared the information with my lawyers, and they've shared it with an inquiry overseas into uh, the British contaminated blood scandal, of which I've been a witness in, uh, because Australia did export blood overseas, and they're investigating whether it arrived in the UK. There are patients over there that claim to have received Australian blood products, and they've had uh, infected blood as a result. So... Um, what, what's happened is is a major cover-up ha has, has occurred. And it's again, it's, it's due to this Australia exporting tainted blood around the world. Now, um, I have been told um, that my life is at risk and I have faced uh, many actions against me over the decades. 
Um, 20 years ago, the Australian government and the Australian Red Cross tried to have me jailed. And uh, here is this story. There it is there. Blood inquiry uh, witness faces court action. And what they did, I, it was 20 years ago, through my research, I had revealed that the dangerous practices of the Australian blood supply, including how they knowingly collected blood from people that they found to be positive for the deadly virus hepatitis C in the 1990s. And they took that blood and they made it into treatments for haemophiliacs. Now, our group and our campaign was, was basically started by the experience of a kid I went to school with who was a haemophiliac, um, who was given HIV contaminated blood treatments and he died of AIDS in 1989. And, uh, you know, I was outraged when I found out that those blood products had been knowingly made from infected blood. And so I brought that out to the public and the Sydney Morning Herald at that time was a good paper back then. Um, it printed that. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was uh, facing trumped up charges. Um, there you go. And uh, I had to go to court. And uh, they were saying that I had distributed confidential donor information that didn't belong to me. Now, how on earth would that be the case? I did no such thing. And they know that. But it didn't matter because they were trying to intimidate and bully me. Well, I stood up to it and they dropped those trumped up charges. But the experience changed me. It really did. And I realized that, um, uh, yeah, basically I was told by someone I'm going to have to live like a monk. Okay, so I, d I don't get into gambling and I don't accept donations because I know that, you know, if there was one accounting error of just $2, these guys would be on me, even though they take tens of millions, some of these charities, and even though they've been disgraced. I mean, the Australian Red Cross was disgraced. I helped expose, um, is it way back 20 years ago, when Australia had its worst terrorism event, the terrible Bali bombing. And I think over 100 Australians uh, were, were killed young people as well, over in Bali by a terror act that targeted Australians. And the Australian Red Cross had a, uh, um, had a, uh, an appeal and it raised millions and millions of dollars in record time. And um, I then found out that the victims of the survivors weren't getting that money. It was being held back by the Red Cross so they could make interest on it. And I held forums for Bali bombing victims and we managed to get their money back. I'm happy that that happened. So um, we know that to win this fight, we have to be more ethical. We have to really be ethical. We're not like New South Wales Health. We don't take billions of taxpayer money to deny them basic rights, such as people with HIV and hepatitis C should have their dental treatments paid for. Yes, they should. It's paid for in Canada. It's paid for in Ireland. It's paid for in the United Kingdom. If you're an infected blood victim over there, you know, if anyone overseas is watching this, you know that to be true. And yet if you're an Australian, there's no, an Australian with HIV or hepatitis C, you're treated like absolute garbage, okay? And there are people in our group who don't want to go public. They don't want to um, appeal on social media. They want to maintain their dignity and their privacy. Not that I want to lose mine either, but the reason I made these videos is for the others in our group, because we can't ask for donations to pay for everybody's teeth. There's not enough money to go around. Australians are doing it tough at the moment. I'm very moved by people who don't have a lot of money themselves offering to pay for my teeth. I'm going to force the system to pay for the teeth of contaminated blood victims. That is what I'm going to do. And if my teeth fall out in the process by experiencing the same things as other victims in our group do, then so be it, okay? So be it. Please, please help us. We need to get a Royal Commission. Australians are being mistreated. I found this out years ago about the difference of how Australian residents and citizens are treated compared with other people, other medical patients around the world. We've had such a tough time these last two years and it's been brought on us by these health bureaucrats. Please go to our bio and please click on the link supporting our call for a Royal Commission into this scandal or please click on the link in the description of this video if you're watching on another platform. And thank you very much. And if you're one of those people that offered to pay for my teeth, I hope you can understand. And I've got to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, you're my friend for life because that, that generosity for us and the care you have for Australians is uh, deeply moving. Thank you very, very much.